That's First a question. question. Mm-hmm. Uh, what inspired this exhibition? Uh, well, what inspired this exhibition? I think it all started where there was a gap in the calendar and um, I thought uh, the gallery approached me and said, could, could I do a show in May? And I thought... Which um, gallery? Oh, the Wool and Gabba Art Gallery. Where am I it's supposed to be looking? Just to don't quickly. Just to you. Yeah. Cool, cool. So, um, yeah. So the Wool and Gabba Art Gallery in Stanley Street, Wool and Gabba. And, um, and I thought, yeah, why not? Like, I can do works on paper. I can make it more accessible. And I was really looking for a show about youth and zeal and I'd already focused on colour quite a fair bit and um, so for this exhibition um, I looked at a lot of the work I'd done over the last 30 years and especially these Queensland um, 90s series of fruit pictures Mm. because that's the highest natural occurring (laughs) colour. Fruity Lexia was not used in the making of right. these pictures. Um, it was more like a Shiraz. <laughs> but um, no, uh, it, the beautiful thing about like persimmons and mangoes and living in Queensland is just you have this natural um, affinity with colour and colour is very optimistic. And then suddenly the COVID crisis comes in and you're not allowed to socialise and see um, bright colours travel, um, you know, vary your. Um, oral, uh, uh, I mean your sort of optical palette, yeah. so then going down to the fruit shop there was like a fantastic yellow melon and these bright red pears and it, it was, hungry. yeah I know, like it, these paintings do like, they even have my art dealer like going, man I'm going out to eat some fruit, so um, yeah, but when you cut a dragon fruit in half and it's white with these little black dots or you know when you um, split fruit like a kiwi fruit and there's something about it that looks in, innately Japanese if you put like an oriental fabric behind it um, I guess the tradition of still life painting like you know out of the 1600s in you know Flemish painting is the brevity of life and um, you know the Covid crisis is all about brevity of life and appreciating life you know while you have it and so if you're doing that you know um, in a solo way then it's kind of celebrating natural light and I always just paint directly from the subject I never use photographs and I always just use the observation of natural light or a fluorescent bulb at night <laughs> um, and um, maybe a desk lamp. It, like, it okay, sure, sure. That's good money. info. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I tell you what, how can you not laugh when you, you've got a, a, you know, a picture called dragon fruit meets sugar plum? I mean, there they both are for hours and hours on end. And the beautiful thing about it is once you start looking at these colours, and I was really lucky to be taught by William Robinson at QUT in the oh, yeah. late 80s. Yeah, yeah. in just like three, three years he was on fire as a lecturer before he started professionally painting. And I got to organise this massive big uh, show about his work at the William Robinson Gallery in the last year called Elixir of Light. Yeah, and so I'm a huge fan of Bill Robinson and yeah. he's a, you know, a massive mentor to me because We've had a, um, you know, a correspondence by post that's lasted like 36 years or whatever. Yeah, and they use letters. my, they, yeah, they use my letters in, in the exhibitions there and also our palettes Blow are similar. Trumpet. Yeah, like, I just, you know, what can you say about Bill? He's just an absolute genius and we're so lucky to have the only living artist in Australia um, with a whole gallery dedicated to him. So, but he was a colour specialist and coming from Maryborough, Queensland, I just couldn't let go of this bright colour theme. When I was 19, the footpath, which was grey, used to be purple and orange to me. And then the more I painted, the more subtle my colour palette became. But yeah, he was just, um, uh, I was very lucky to have him in my life. Yeah, And we both showed with the Ray Hughes Gallery for, I was there for 10 years from like 90, 91 to 2001 uh-huh. and um, June Tapakoff, Tom Risley, Joe Furlonga, it was like the big art boom and bust. Oh wow, cool. Well they're pretty... Print. No, it's a um, thingy block, what is it? Oh, lino cut? Lino cut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah wood cut or I something. Okay. Yeah, Joe, yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. Who's, who's that? Because it doesn't have any initial... Oh, it's got JF. JF. 
Yeah. I, I can never remember who it was. But he's got a touch of the Ian Fairweathers does some. Yeah, he yeah. Does. So he's Yeah. And he also did a lot of time uh, in Vietnam and um, he, when he won the Moet and Chandon in France, him and Davida Allen, like there was a whole swoop, a whole, um, you know, Ray Hughes wanted to take Queensland artists to the rest of the world. And so when they wouldn't let him in the Venice Biennale, he set up his own pav pavilion and took about 12 Australian artists over there and said, this is what we look like, you know? And then I think Howard Arkley was on fire at the time. But um, yeah, it's this show is really about um, like a celebration of uh, life and a zest of life. And then in the portraits, not like nudes don't really sell, although I'm a life drawing teacher and have been for like 25 years. Um, there's something powerful about young people just in clothes being painted a bit like the David Hockney portraits of like 1972 just the, the contour drawings of his friends I just think there's a real lovely force in young thinking at the moment like we do have to turn a corner and COVID's made that really apparent like I've got to computer up my skills after going no it'll take time from my painting painting is primary wow. and now I've got to like you know skill up on computers yeah. and the internet and so um so yeah I think it's a really great time to celebrate um, how switched on the youth are. And so there's a few uh, gouache, large gouache portraits about um, like uh, my son Max who's 11 and my auntie who's um, 22 yeah, in there as well. And portraits of uh, my friend Jane, very tasteful. Yeah. So how long are you using some pictures that you had painted like a few years ago or did you just go from when that gallery date was, was mentioned Set, to you. Yeah. you go, okay, I'm doing all fresh pictures from now on this kind of inspiration. Yeah, well, yeah, I started painting and fresh. How long was that? Go that on. was probably, I started painting intensely uh, probably in November. And um, so, yeah, just so that's really, so people who yeah, don't just have a, a date of this interview. Sure, that's yeah, yeah. Six months ago. Six months ago, yeah, yeah. So, but, but normally an artist would get a year and a half to prepare for a show. So I just decided I'd go for works on paper. And so I'd go down to Melbourne, and my friends were staying near the Mooney Ponds racetrack. And so I'd just stand there for hours and hours and paint the light over the racetrack. And, um, you know, just work always from life. So, yeah, basically your average um, painting might take like 60 hours or something like that, some of these um, oils that are fruit party pictures. But um, yeah, it's really just about having the time to look and observe and watch change in, in light and shadow. Yeah. And just, um, that's fantastic. <laughs> we can wrap up the interview here if, it's, if uh, the next question doesn't... <laughs> we can give it, a, give it a red hot go. Just for the... Can you give us a price range for your paintings? Um, sure. Say the, you know, the average punter like me might go, well, have you got a postcard? Have I got a postcard? postcard. <laughs> I've got, postcard you know, there has been there has been talk of uh, doing. I just um, often do that. They go, prints, oh, you can buy yeah. a pissy little postcard too. Yeah. Which is fine because you get. Yeah, sure, something. sure. Well, look, I'm. Um, I guess I started. Let me guess. You want to guess now? <laughs> <laughs> Look, top price. I'm telling you, like you, you're coming in at the garage. Top dollar. Top dollar. Top. Oh, the most I've ever sold a painting for is probably sixteen and a half thousand. But top dollar at the exhibition. This one. At, oh, at this exhibition, um, uh, probably yeah, about five five thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the large floral works um, in oil are probably that that much. But we've got to remember we're using the best quality pigments on the globe. Rose matter. How much yeah. is it? So, how much is a small tube? So a small tube of rose matter will be about sixty dollars, oh, and it's made. On there. How small is it? It's this small, like and it's how like. how thin? Well, it's it's about that thin. It's about the size of two big lighters, and it's sixty dollars because it's from the rose matter root, which is really rare, and also cadmium yellow, cad orange, cad red. They have to be mined, and they're also the most toxic substance that you can handle. So don't suck the end of your brush because you might get, mm. you know cancer and um, always wash your hands a lot. So if you're a pencil chewer. Mm. Yeah, I know, but like washing your hands a lot, staying by yourself for hours looking at fruit. This is COVID magic, you know, it's just out there for us. It's this 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 isolation is right where I belong. Are you yeah. calling the 
exhibition or something? Or I'm calling, well, no, it's, it's not. Um, <laughs> can you believe that I was at the chemist the other day Spy. and some crazy graphic artist had put in the corner in a little slit, got your COVID. And I just thought, <laughs> don't get me COVID with anything. You freak! That's not funny. Um, no, but it was funny. I it's wish I'd taken a snap. Bad. It's not. It's, it's not coming the out. Worst <laughs> thing that's right. I thought, don't get me COVID, please, and don't give me a thumbs up that you're able to do use that, that and die. Yeah. <laughs> please, in in place of me, if I can't hook it up um, <laughs> with my internet. So, um, but the, the joy is. Um, the painting, uh, the exhibition will probably end up being called Fruit Party for One, uh, Still Life, uh, Youth Portraits and Landscapes of Melbourne and Brisbane. So by more like acronym. I know it's I know it's wordy, but I've noticed the more people stay at home, the more they want to know exactly what's going on. No. Don't well, tell me the interview. fluff. So hence the, the interview, because that's at an ex right. Ex ex exhibition, I'll be at the exhibition. Mm. by myself because it's well, one at a time we could do it and we wouldn't be in. drinking and we'd only let you in mm. one at a time and it'd be like a bit like 2001 Space Odyssey what about Odyssey. the fact that actually are you having is there going to be an opening and you actually have people one at a time in no but what we could do is we could arrange um, bespoke artist v visits like one on one I'm happy to meet you at the gallery and within COVID regulations oh, yeah. you know um, you're interested in work yeah yeah come yeah. and have a look um, and we're also stretching out the time of the exhibition, so instead of four weeks, it'll be six weeks. So there's plenty more time. The only time I ever buy mm. is that, and I always walk away from the exhibition, I go, did I just spend fucking $2,000? Because <laughs> yeah. like, I'm pissed. Ka-ching! You've woken up to the, yeah, you've woken up to the little, like, little wallet twister. It. Yeah, but let the champagne flow. Paintings. It's um, a sense of, you can't offer abundance from emptiness, right? So I use tons of paint. We get the, we get the wine flowing. We get it all happening. Mm. <laughs> it all, it all, you know, it's all, it's been how that does, way for ages. How does the exhibition, can you explain how it's going to actually happen? Because it's a COVID exhibition. Mm -hmm. how, do, how does it, uh, like, are you having a, d a launch online, or is it just at the gallery, or...? Yeah, yeah, from a certain date, um, it'll be at the gallery, and it'll be online, and then, furthermore... A certain date? Yeah, from a, like, What's you know... Date? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go back, we're going to take it, take it back old school, produce, uh, instead of invitations, I'm going to produce a catalogue with, like, eight images, eight to ten images of the works, yeah, and a small really little essay. Like yeah, and then, you, and then the lovely people at Brisbane get something in their hands that they can go, oh, this, you know, this is nice, because when something turns up in the mail, it's rather exciting these days. And um, also, you know that only 500 people have touched it, so that's <laughs> weight off your shoulders. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm with sure gloves. the post, yeah, with loads of gloves. You, at least, you know, that the world's <laughs> choking on the plastic that has gone through this process oh. of getting the catalogues out. I go through like 20 pairs of plastic gloves a day. Yeah, well, I don't know. I just, I just, the no, mitts, I just painting. wash like crazy. But um, yeah, I'm sure that the people with selling steroid cream for overwashing are going to make a fortune now. <laughs> just, so, just in case some of the watchers, like all yeah. three of them, are there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, See you, mom. <laughs> Just in case, um, you know, they are still watching at this stage. It's quite a long interview, but oh. that, what else you got to do? What else? What um, else have we got to do? Well, look, it, can you give us, uh, how do they find out about the thing? Oh, well, look, um, the Wollongabba Art Gallery have got uh, information online. So oh. the, from a certain date, the show will be accessible, like you can come in. Um, but usually in no, no more than groups of two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but actually, legally, up per space, the gallery can fit 30 people in it. It's just that everybody's being very conservative, which is a wise thing to do. So, so in, in reality, you hang the paintings in the Hang the, the paintings. The okay. exhibition happens so as normal. It yeah. So it's like you have an opening night, but no one comes. Well, it's, yeah, it's like Tears of a Clown, I guess, at that point, you know, yeah. it's very, it's very Bridget Jones' diary. So oh, by myself. This melancholically. <laughs> yeah, it's, and I can't even drink, so it's just, it's a you very have, sad. You should have a live, um, Facebook live fucking cross to it. Yeah, just, just you and me. me by ourselves, just by ourselves, kicking a ball around. Yeah, why so not? You can get back a bit, you're a bit close okay. to me. Okay. Yeah, That's fair enough, right. I know. You can just feel that interchange. So I think that this is how the, it's going to roll out for the gallery. Yeah. And it'll roll out this way that the gallery exhibition will be up and 
uh, we'll be filming it so you can see it all online um, even before it opens. Yeah. And then uh, we'll do a tour of the at some stage of yeah. from the gallery yeah. so people can have a virtual tour yeah. that's perhaps live streamed. And then we can also have our speci- for special um, COVID situations yeah. um, something called. D I S dis, which is easy to remember when you're dissing everything and locked inside and full of hate, but it's drawing in isolation <laughs> for sanity. So <laughs> we can That's remember diffs. That's well, the drawing in isolation. Isolation four. four. I was dropping F. the draw the in and the f out. <laughs> I was dropping out my little words and I was just going straight for dis because I thought, what can you remember when you're so angry, yeah. locked inside? So drawing for sanity is gonna i'm gonna sum up my 30 years of drawing teaching that and with the beautiful help of william robinson's teaching like picking up the pencil like a stick Mm. and everyone's got their own individual mark and i've taught thousands of people to bring out that individual mark so i'm going to teach people how to draw um at home in like 10 easy steps much shorter than my speech about my my gallery opening yeah (laughs) yeah yeah. two minutes yeah well two minutes up you think i don't know we're gonna wrap it up are we still paying for stv calls (laughs) oh look we've got one person watching this isn't live by the way we're just very funny people no Um, (laughs) jolly good so um do you want to wrap it up with a yeah sure like um this exhibition in advance for buying the painting i'm going to thank you in advance for (laughs) keeping artists alive in queensland and Mm -hmm. um i want to thank all those people i know and love that are looking around their house and going Gee whiz, what are we missing? Oils and gouaches. What a boring space. I oh, know I can oh go God. there. Yeah, yeah, I know. Have you seen what's in the background of, all, of everyone's COVID? Butterfly collections, you know, yeah. fake Aboriginal art, which is shaming, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we've got to step it up. We need uh, we need good things to look at it in the house. Yeah, makes and you happy. And that's where my work comes in. Makes you happy. Colours make you happy. So get online. Yep. Stay on a bottle of wine. Yep. And, uh, and get, get on the, get on the wag, www <laughs> wag. Yep. Yeah, we'll have art gallery and um, just let, let, let the good times roll. Get your friends over, draw their heads, see how it works out. No, don't get them over, actually. Just wait for the online search. Yeah, it's but I'll, te- I'll, I'll teach you how to draw from nature. Yeah, yeah, just it's hard for me to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I'm going with it. Nada, no That's more. A wrap. Ha, 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 ha.